everyone, welcome back. My name is Morgan, this is my channel Pisces Paperbacks, and today I'm gonna to be giving you some recommendations on like spooky fall vibe books. So they're not particularly gonna be like scary. Some of them are more like thriller horror books, but some of them I just feel like are the right energy for the season. Um, I am wearing a t-shirt with my favorite vampire on it, so I wanted to get in the mood. I did my makeup, this should look pretty for all of you, and I'm gonna dive in. There's 10 books on the list. I did initially try to divide them into like scary versus like spooky or like Halloween y versus fall, but I felt like there was a little bit too much crossover, so I was like, fuck it, just all 10, one list, let's go. The first book on this list I'm only gonna talk about for a little bit because I know it's on like everybody's list for this season, and that is The Seven and a Half Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle by Stuart Turton. This is a book that I read last year, probably. September so you know around this time and it tells the story of the main character who has eight days to solve the murder of Evelyn Hardcastle who dies at midnight during this party at this manor in like the 30s I think but actually it's not eight days it's the same day lived eight times through eight different perspectives all of them guests at this house party in the country and I loved the mystery. I I think there's like a greater framing device that I don't think very much served the story. So a lot of people don't really like the very last twist at the end. I don't mind it. I don't hate it. It really honestly means nothing to me. I mostly just like don't think about it. Um, but the mystery itself, I adored. I thought it was so interesting. I loved the characters and I just thought it was really fun. I think it's a really good seasonal vibe. Like when I think about the energy this book gives off, there's a lot of fog like foggy country lanes with encroaching forest, everybody trapped in a house together kind of energy. So very much recommend that book. I gave it four stars, but it's one of my favorites. So I don't really know how that works out. The next book I wanna talk about is actually the first one I thought of when I was like, should I do this video? And that is Meddling Kids by Edgar Cantero. I've recently been going through a resurgence of my love of Scooby-Doo. I've watched a bunch of Scooby-Doo TV shows and movies and stuff recently, and they're so good. And this is basically like Scooby-Doo, but if all of the lives of the gang like went to shit. So it's not like literally the Scooby-Doo gang, but it is four teenagers and a dog and they were a mystery solving group in high school when they were like 14 and they solve this one mystery it's the last one they ever solve and they go their separate ways and it's like 10 years later and nothing has gone right for them one of them has just died like neither, all of them are like in dead-end places in their lives they don't really know what's going on and one of the girls decides that she's gonna get the gang back together bring them back to the town where everything went down and figure out what went so wrong with their lives there is possibly some like <laughs> eldritch monster shit going on and I was literally reading this book and it was late at night and I kept looking up to make sure nothing was in the shadows which is I think a good hallmark of a horror book I think this is also a really like kind of like meta humor horror book so the narration is really self-aware and often slides into talking to the reader it's just very funny but also very creepy and I loved it I can't even I really, really enjoyed this book. Third on this list, I wanna talk about Feed by Mira Grant. This is basically if two independent journalists uh, were picked to go on the presidential campaign trail post zombie apocalypse. So in this book, the brother and sister run an independent news blog. And like I said, they're selected to follow the presidential campaign. And this is about 15 years post zombie apocalypse. And it really is examining about like how society has changed and how zombies have kind of become a part of their daily life but also like is there a conspiracy to assassinate this very promising presidential candidate that they're following around i don't know i really like this book as someone who went to school for journalism and is trying to be a journalist like as my career i thought it was very interesting um there's some stuff that isn't quite true to life it's a bit extreme but you know it's a book it's fun and I really enjoyed it. I also, when I originally made this list, had Middle Game by Shauna McGuire and possibly Into the Drowning Deep by Mira Grant, which are the same author under different pen names, on this list. And I didn't want to have three together on the list by the same author, but those are two that I would also recommend for the season. I really loved Middle Game. I gave it five stars. And I thought Into the Drowning Deep was okay. I gave it three stars, but they're both very good. And they're both good, like, Into the Drowning Deep is horror and Middle Game is more, like, this more macabre sci-fi fantasy so 
recommend there too. Up next is Halfway to the Grave by Janine Frost. I could not make this list without a paranormal fantasy and this one is going to be a vampire fantasy. So this book follows Kat who is a half vampire vampire hunter and she runs into Bones who was a very old vampire and he agrees that if she will work with him to hunt down specifically the vampires that he's been hired to target as a bounty hunter. He will let her, you know, learn the best ways to kill vampires and, you know, pursue her vampire hunting destiny. And there's a bit of more of a conspiracy and they fall in love. And I really liked this book. This book is actually, okay, this book is actually just okay. It's pretty good. The series as a whole is filled with books that are pretty good, just okay, but are so fun and enjoyable and you love the characters and you love their relationship and you really get to see Cat and Bones their relationship grow over the seven books which you do not need to read all seven of them it's totally fine it's honestly one of my favorite romance series I've ever read despite the fact that all of the books are like a three three and a half four star like nothing's really a five star so I really highly recommend this book. Even if that just doesn't sound like I'm really highly recommending it, I'm really highly recommending this series, which is the Night Huntress series. That's the official name. And since I definitely cannot make this list without a thriller, the next book I want to talk about is The Turn of the Key by Ruth Ware. This was the first book I read in 2020 and I actually really loved it. This book follows, I forget her name, it's been a while, but she applies to be the nanny, the live-in nanny at this very remote house in Scotland and basically this house it's very old but it's been updated with all of these really high-tech smart house things and she begins to think that the house might be haunted and somebody is trying to basically come for her I loved this book I thought it was so creepy I thought the audiobook did a really good job with like the sound effects and really getting that that whole environment kind of down really well I think this is the one best suited to kind of the creepy season specifically what with what the tropes it's dealing with and like the haunted house basically vibe I love a haunted house story it's like my favorite kind of horror movie I haven't read as many haunted house books as I'd like to but I'm trying to work on that and add those books to my TBR like going forward as I find them next and I think this one is really like atmospheric in the perfect way for this season I mean it's beautiful outside right now but for the spooky season and that is Ninth House by Lee Bardugo. I know this book was extremely divisive when it first came out. I really enjoyed it. I gave it four stars and I think that people who might have been like hesitant should really give it a chance. So this book follows Galaxy Stern or Alex Stern as she has been invited to attend Yale. Because she can see ghosts she's invited to join basically the secret society police of the ninth house that make sure the eight houses of magic at Yale aren't abusing their powers and she gets wrapped up in a mystery and there's like some drama with her like interpersonal relationships this is definitely an adult book it's extremely graphic extremely triggering in some senses there is um, sexual assault depicted twice throughout the book I think twice and there's a body horror blood injury death like a lot of drug abuse a lot of stuff in this book I didn't think that anything was glorified or overly described I think everything was was just talked about as much as it needed to be before moving on with the story but I know that can be iffy for some people so I'd look into it if you're interested in this book it's like ghosts magic evil like conspiracies mysteries murder mysteries like there's so much going on here and it's all like the perfect vibe like like Yale that kind of New England setting I think is just perfect for the season this next book that I want to talk about is like a purely vibes recommendation and that is the starless sea by Erin Morgenstern as you might know if you've been watching my videos this is one of my favorite books I've read this year possibly one of my favorite books of all time and I just think that the energy this book gives off is like cozy, fall, warm, hot chocolate, fireplace, sweaters, like curled up on a couch, there's a cat nearby, you know what I mean? It's exactly the fall book that I think people need but don't really think of it as a fall book. Basically what The Starless Sea is about is this grad student, Zachary Ezra Rollins, discovers a book in his college library and in this book, one chapter is describing an event that happened in his childhood 
And in this story, in this book, he discovers that he missed an opportunity to open the door and discover the Starless Sea, which is this kind of underground library, magical world library thing. And he kind of goes on this adventure to find the Starless Sea and then save it from destruction. But he falls in love and there's also different stories interwoven throughout the book like you as you're reading the story of Zachary going on his journey you're also reading stories that are in books that are in the Starless Sea and you see how those stories kind of are interwoven into the fabric of the Starless Sea and the world there and how they're woven into each other and also real life and kind of just the magic that stories can bring to your life is what this book is about. I love it. I think everybody should read it and I think it's perfect for fall. On a slightly different note, I would like to recommend Foul is Fair by Hannah Capen. So this one isn't really like a fall vibes kind of book. I honestly, when I think about it, I think about like summer nights and being kind of like outside sweaty but I think in tone it's really appropriate this is basically like watching a slasher horror movie but if the protagonist was the killer it follows Jade and her group of friends and Jade was assaulted at a party and decides to take revenge on all of the boys who kind of were a part of the assault happening by killing them so she kind of infiltrates their school and gets to work I adored this book I don't know if everybody's going to love the way it's written um, it's a very interesting lyrical but very sharp writing style and I don't know if that's for everybody I really enjoyed it so I hope you enjoy it I think that it's it's a nice bloody one for Halloween. Second to last and also a purely vibes recommendation is The House in the Cerulean Sea by TJ Klune. This book follows, I think his name is Linus, and he is a caseworker for like the Department of Magical Children, and he goes to orphanages and makes sure that these magical children are being taken care of and have basically a good place to stay. And very upper management, picks him and is like you're gonna go to this remote island and you're gonna check to make sure this orphanage specifically is doing okay and oh by the way one of the kids there is the Antichrist and it's about Linus basically finding a found family when he doesn't really think that companionship is in the cards for him and falling in love with the man who runs the orphanage and just learning more about himself and it's so sweet it's so sweet it's like it's like being wrapped up in a warm blanket the entire book. Like, it is not an angst heavy book if you're looking for something light and cheerful and fun and whimsical and like imaginative, but still like there's like magical elements with these magical children that are all kind of have different magical things going on with them. I think this is like the perfect book to read. It's not very long, it's really quick to read and I just loved it so much. Lastly, and most importantly, is a book that I have not yet finished. I'm 65% through, but if everything keeps going, it's going to be a book that I love for like the rest of my life, and that is Cemetery Boys by Aidan Thomas. So Cemetery Boys follows Yadriel, and he wants to be a brujo. In his family and community, brujos can send spirits to the afterlife and assist them in like safely and peacefully passing and brujas can heal and he is trans and he wants to be a brujo and his family just isn't very accepting so he performs the ritual by himself and becomes a brujo and that same night his cousin dies and they're trying to find him he decides that he is going to prove to everyone that he's a brujo by bringing his cousin's spirit back and finding out who killed him however instead of bringing his cousin's spirit back he summons Julian Diaz who has recently died and was like a bad boy at the high school that they go to and so they strike up a deal. Yadriel is going to help Julian figure out who killed him and make sure his friends are okay and Julian is going to let Yadriel help his spirit pass and prove to his whole family that he is a brujo, he is a boy and it's so cute so far. I'm literally obsessed with it. I I love it. I love the relationship between Yadriel and Julian. I love Yadriel's friends and cousins and the bond that he has with his family despite the the very hard feeling of not feeling like his family accepts him. He still cares about them so much and kind of the the struggle of reconciling those two 
very strong feelings and it's just so well written it's so funny it's so cute and it takes place the last week of October it's so good please read it I, and I know everybody else is reading it already there was a big thing about it making the New York Times bestsellers list which is incredible and amazing and made me want to pick up pick it up even faster even though I have no control over how long the whole wait time is on Libby but I'm so glad that I got the audiobook I'm so glad I'm listening to it I think it's perfect for the season and I think you should read it so that is the book I want to end with. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know if you're planning to read any of these books or what your favorite spooky fall or just like warm fall vibes books are um, because I'm always interested in adding more to my TBR. So let me know in the comments and I will see you guys next time. Bye.